at some point you are going to become the bottleneck in your business and you are going to have to hire someone to help you. So whether you are going to hire additional teachers or people to support you in your business in other ways, it's so important to get the hiring process right. Even though you may be so, so ready to get that support that you need to move your business forward, it's absolutely imperative that you take your time before, during, and after you make a job offer to someone so that you don't just put a person in the role, but rather put the right person in the role. So in today's episode of the Pilates Business Podcast, I'm going to share my three key steps that you should take when hiring for your studio business. Well, hi there. I'm Sarah Glanfield. I'm a business and marketing strategist just for boutique fitness studio owners like you. If you're ready to be inspired and make a bigger impact, you're in the right place. All you need are a few key strategies, the right mindset, and some support along the way. Join me as I share the real life insights that will help you grow a sustainable and profitable studio. This is the Pilates Business Podcast. Welcome back to the Pilates Business Podcast. I'm Saran and I'm thrilled that you're here with me again today. I've got my coffee and I kind of need it because I have been running on a little bit less sleep the last few days. So bear with me. I might be uh, talking a little bit speedier than normal (laughs) with all the coffee that I've had so far today, but that's not a bad thing because we're talking about something that will almost 100% come up for you as a studio owner. And that topic is hiring. Now, it can be a little bit overwhelming and perhaps a little bit confusing as to how to approach hiring, but you can absolutely set yourself up and your studio for success by implementing a tried and true process with these three key steps. And that's what I really want to share with you here today. Now, I have worked with hundreds of studio owners around the globe um, in brick and mortar studios and online businesses and in other businesses within our industry. And hiring is something that comes up frequently amongst all studio owners of all sizes. And we talk about it a lot inside of my Thrive group coaching program, because I have to say, whether you're managing clients or you're managing a team, people management is one of those things that I absolutely guarantee just pops up from time to time. And if you have a growing studio business, it really is only a matter of time before you're going to need a little bit of extra help, which means that all of a sudden your skill set has broadened and you are now managing people. So whether you're hiring someone to teach clients or someone to support you in managing your clients, perhaps um, support the business side or the marketing side of your studio, the hiring process is going to be pretty much the same. And I like to kind of organize it into three key steps. And the reason why I like to kind of break it down this way is because it can be very, very overwhelming to think about hiring someone, bringing someone into your business, perhaps filling their schedule, perhaps committing to supporting them and paying them. You know, it's a big step. And I know that for many studio owners who have built their business up from scratch, it is a, it is a quite a big step up into stepping into that role as a manager of people. Um, And so oftentimes when we kind of think about hiring, um, it can be quite overwhelming, but when we break it down, um, it can seem a lot more doable. So that's what I want to do for you today. And so those three steps that I will kind of break it down into is the first step, which is the application and creating the application. And this is really important. It's where we often skip Um, because we are are often ready to go straight into that interviewing and talking to people because we are people, people, right? So we like to chat with people and get to know people. And so we often go a little bit too quickly into the interview stage um, without perhaps having done some of the prep work ahead of time that will really set you up for success. Um, And then the final step is a step that is, I have to say, 95% of the time missed, but is, is really, really important. And that step is onboarding and training that team member really, really, really well. Okay. So within each of these stages, there are multiple tasks and considerations to make. Um, And I'm going to share um, a little bit more about each of those in turn. Okay. So let's talk about the application process and what to do kind of before you kind of begin even considering interviewing anybody. Um, And before you set up that very first interview with anyone, um, the work of getting your hire 
and the right person in the role, that that's where the real work lies. Um, the first thing that you need to spend some time on is putting together a job description. And what does that mean? Well, that really is about writing a very clear outline of the role that you're looking to fill and who would be the most ideal candidate to fill that role. So putting together a job description should include um, a brief overview of your business, um, including what you stand for, what your business is all about, your core values. If you've done my marketing intensive, you'll have those to hand. Um, and it will also share a little bit about um, what it is that it's like to work for you and your studio. Okay. And this is important to share with potential candidates because it will help you to find the people who are in alignment with your values and what you stand for in your business. So you definitely want to make sure that you're presenting your business in a way that sh shows candidates um, what you are all about. Obviously, we also want to include an, a description of the responsibilities that the role will include, including um, those specific deliverables. So if you've got certain things you absolutely need that candidate to do for you, um, things that that new hire will take ownership of, this is where you want to get that all down on paper. Okay. Now you probably have some qualifications or credentials or education or experience that you're seeking in the person who will fill that role. And so you might want to put that in the job description as well. Depending on the role, it may be that you have um, a must have, like you must have at least two years of teaching experience, for example, or um, it might be that you have some, this would be nice. It would be, I, it would be great if you also have this and you can list some other um, qualifications, et cetera, that perhaps um, you might want to see in an ideal candidate. So you want to make sure that you're being very reasonable with what you're including here and that it, it is going to give you um, and bring you numerous candidates. That's the goal. Okay. Because we're going to be sorting through them in the next phase. So you also want to make sure before you even start interviewing and talking to people that you have it clear for you and the candidate um, what the compensation is and what the hours will be. Okay. And yes, pay is negotiable, perhaps depending on the role and the experience and so on. So you can absolutely include a range. You can also, um, yeah, I mean, including a range is, is a good way to sort of give you some, a, a bit of a buffer, um, and also include any benefits that come along with, um, with this role, if you have them. Okay. Now, if you haven't decided on how much you're going to pay someone yet, I have to warn you, you're probably not ready to proceed. Okay. As the business owner, as the leader and the manager, this is absolutely something you have to have. I like to make sure that both you and your new team member is set up for success, which means that you have to be absolutely on the same page as to what is expected. Okay. And when it comes to working for, for anyone, you know, you want to know what you're going to get paid. You want to know what, how many hours you're going to need to be working. Okay. Now the final step of this process of this part of the process is to make it super easy for candidates to apply. Okay. So where should they go? What should they do? Um, what do they need to do to be considered? What do they need to send you? Do you need to see a resume? Do you need to see, um, do you want, do you want them to fill out an application form? So you want to be really specific about this and you're doing this kind of part of the, the, this part of the process, you're doing this both for the candidate to make sure that they're aware of what's needed. Um, but also, to get yourself a little bit organized, right? So if you're thinking about what the application process looks like, how people are going to apply, um, what you're going to pay people, what that job looks like, you're going to start off with a, on a really, really good foot. One of the biggest mistakes I see is when folks don't tend to go through this step. They don't tend to list out the tasks, they list out the responsibilities, list out um, what the new hire will take ownership of. They often don't um, actually put together even a schedule for potentially a new teacher or a front desk person, which means that you're kind of being a little bit vague about what you're looking for, which leaves a lot of room for misinterpretation. And, you know, and, and that's where you, you, know, you don't want to start off on that foot, right? You want to be really, really clear. This is your opportunity to, to get everybody on the same page and start on the right foot. Okay. Now, if that already feels like a lot, then that's okay. You know, the process of hiring someone new can take, 
you know, anywhere from, you know, a month to two months to three months, depending on, you know, how long it takes you to do some of these things. This should not take you more than just a few days, if not less, you know, a couple of hours of just putting your head down and, and, and getting some of these things done is all it will take. And what I know from having done this with many folks is that once you kind of have this process outlined, once you have an outline of a job description, once you have an outline of, of the benefits of the roles and so on, um, you can reuse them later on. So it's sort of a good process to have in place in your studio. So once you've kind of thought about that timeline, perhaps it's a, you know, a week or so to put together this part of the process, you'll want to then move into um, the application process. Okay. And the application process will likely take one to two weeks also, because you're going to post the, the job and share it. And then you want to wait for some people to send in their applications, right? So in order for this to happen, you first will, I encourage you actually to create some sort of an application form. Now you can just use Google forms or something similar if you want. And this is a form where you're basically going to ask some screening questions that will help you to filter the applications easily. It will also help you to have you know, all of the candidate applications in one place. So it helps you to really stay organized, which can be quite a challenge if you've got people sending you random emails or DMs with their resumes attached and a list and so on. If you have them fill out an application form, you know that everything is going to be on there. Okay. You also want to make sure that you're going to block out some time on your schedule for these interviews. You know, if you, if you teach, um, many, many hours and you're doing a lot of admin and you are, you know, already fully booked, then you may not have time to interview folks. So I'd encourage you to just think about when you can make that happen and, and how you can maneuver that into your schedule. Okay. This is also the time that you want to make sure that you are well informed about the legalities and the rules and the regulations around hiring. Okay. I am not a lawyer. I do not uh, specialize in that area at all. But what I do know is that it's really important that you know what is required of you, depending on the role that you're hiring into. Okay. So I really encourage you to get knowledgeable on this um, and reach out to a, a lawyer or an HR uh, specialist who will be able to give you some guidance. Okay. And then finally, this is kind of the time where you're going to start to see applications coming in. And then it's time to think about, you know, when you want to set that sort of start date for the new candidate, which will mean that you will also, in terms of managing your schedule, you'll also need to block off some time for training and onboarding the new hire. Okay. So I know that you won't know who that person will be just yet, but when you have a timeline considered, you will be able to uh, move into that process very, very quickly and make sure that it is not skipped. Okay. Now, the next thing you want to do is take that up, take that uh, job description take the application, put them together and select the places where you want to post a job. So where do you post a job? There's a lot of different places you can go to post a job. And it really depends on where you're at in your business, um, what role you're looking for and so on. Um, and I've got my method that I share with my Thrive group that, you know, can really help make this next step a breeze. Um, but you definitely want to share your, uh, your, your posting, your, your, your job description to some of the local groups in your area, um, you definitely also want to share it with your local community. Um, and when it comes to hiring, you also want to make sure you've, you're leaning on your network of local studios um, and fitness and wellness professionals to spread the word. Okay. Now, once you've had some applications come in, things start to get a exciting, right? You're starting to look at these candidates and you're starting to see their applications and you're starting to think about, oh my goodness, what's possible for my business now that I've got extra pair of hands? How many more clients can my business hold? What's my potential capacity and so on? And things start to sort of, you know, get exciting here, right? So before we go too far ahead with all of our dreams, um, we want to make sure we're fully prepared for the interview process, which means that you want to make sure that you've got a series of questions outlined um, and these questions will help to give you the information that you need to make the best decision on how, on who you'll select for this position. Okay. Now above and beyond my recommendation is to, um, focus on personality and fit as sort of just number one. Um, you're going to be working closely with this person and they're going to be working closely with your clients too. They're going to represent your brand and your business. 
So it's important that they fit and they're aligned with you and your business goals, the way that you engage and interact with your clients. So you're going to want to ask questions that help them to perhaps come out of their shell a little bit. You're going to want to get to know them. um, And you're going to want to make sure that you can get them talking a little bit about their experience themselves. Um, You want to listen to their answers, perhaps ask more questions based on their answers. And, you know, I'd encourage you to take notes. Um, because this is going to, how you're going to figure out if they are the right fit, if they are aligned with your studio values, because what I've discovered over the years, um, having done this again, over and over again, um, with various different studios and various different industries as well, is that skills generally can be taught, but it doesn't matter how experienced someone is, if they don't have the right personality for your studio, if they don't have the right, if if they're not the right fit for your studio, then it will create a lot of headaches for you down the road. And that is not going to be supportive of your business at all. So now that you've had a couple of interviews, it is time to choose. And I have to say, if you feel like you need a second interview with with one or two of the candidates, because it's a difficult decision, then absolutely feel free to do that. But once you've gathered all of the information you have, you want to make a a decision based on how the candidate fits within the business how their experience and educations qualify them based on job description. You know, some of those notes that you took, you'll want to review and and think back. Um, And then if you've asked for any reference checks, um, you will want to proceed to that stage now at this point. Okay. And then once you've chosen that candidate, exciting times, it's time to make the offer. So at this point, you've made it through two of the three big steps in the hiring process. And a mistake that I see some studio owners make is that they kind of think the job is done. Um, The new hire will come in, get to work, and finally you'll have a ton of help and everything will be amazing, but not so fast. This third step is absolutely critical to, to ensuring that this hire is a absolute success for your studio business. And it's every bit as important as the other two steps. And if you want this new hire to work out, you absolutely have to onboard them and train them in all the ways of working inside of your studio business. And what I recommend actually is setting up some sort of a schedule and some sessions specific to you and your um, your new hire or someone, whoever is sort of your studio manager to work closely with your new hire to make sure that they are aware of how the systems work, of who's who in the studio, who does what. Um, And you kind of want to think about that schedule on sort of a first day, first week and first month kind of basis, right? So on day one, you're going to need to get the new hire set up internally. So this might mean just a lot of work, perhaps even just on, on admin side on your end, putting them into the schedule, getting them set up inside of your booking system and so on. But you're also going to want to make sure that the new hire um, knows about things like team meetings, how to, where clients should go to purchase new packages, what your intro package is. Um, you want to again, perhaps give them software access or perhaps access to your, um, group chat and so on, right? You want to also make sure that they are introduced to other team members. This is also the day you'll get all of that paperwork in place, maybe for payroll and insurance and so on. Okay. And so you want to make sure that that first day you kind of have that checklist um, and you are, you know, you're, you're, you're getting everything that you need, um, on that very first day and you're organized about it. Okay. And then you're going to want to continue that onboarding process with the milestones. So the, for the first week and the first month, and you know, this is, could look like, you know, one-on-one training sessions with you, um, talking through, you know, how to work with clients, specific clients, even in your business, if they're going to be working with some clients that you know very well, um, perhaps talking about your kind of sales process and how you expect your teachers to work with your clients. This is a great time to cover all of that. This is where you kind of can set yourself up for success for the long term with your new hire. Okay. So that end of that first week and, and, and perhaps even the end of the first month, um, you know, and you can view these as a combination of sort of training and mentoring sessions as it were. Okay. Now, as you map out this sort of onboarding schedule, you're going to want to take into account um, what things you're going to need the most help with, what things are most immediately needed inside of your business. And I would suggest you start with those areas first. So this gets you that bit of relief faster. So there's a certain class or um, a particular time um, on the schedule that you need someone, another pair of hands for a teacher, then you're going to want to get them trained up on that first. 
right? Same for if you have someone come into the front desk, you know, what's the thing that they need to know first in order to get up and running as quickly as possible. Okay. The other thing you'll want to take into consideration and share with your new hire is any, what I call SOPs or standard operating procedures. These are really procedures that are documented within the business um, for how things are done generally. Um, and if you don't have those, these are something that as you grow will become more and more important to you because this is not the first or the last this is not that this could be the first, but it's not going to be the last hire that you ever have in your business. Um, so the more kind of documentation or procedures that you have written down, the easier it will be for you to train, not just this candidate, but every other candidate as well. This is also the time where you'll want to share, you know, your preferences for how you want things done in your business. Do not rely on them figuring it out. Um, it will just cause you headaches. Be absolutely upfront with when you want them to show up. Do you want them to show up five minutes ahead of the class or right when class is starting, right? You tell them because that's a critical for you to make sure you get off on that right foot, okay? And as you are onboarding and training and, and, and mentoring your new hire, just keep in mind, as you well know, people tend to learn in many different ways. Some people are visual learners, some people are auditory learners. Some people want to try things and, and, and see how it feels. So depending on, you know, that your candidate and, and, you know, what, how they tend to learn, you, you may need to show people, uh, show that person, um, in a few different ways before they kind of grasp it completely. Okay. So there you have it. I quickly wrapped into this short episode, the three key steps that all studio owners should take when hiring for their business. And I have to say every single one of these steps is utterly important. The application process where you map out exactly what you're looking for in the candidate and the job itself, the interview process where you're getting organized with the applicants, you're asking great questions and you're getting to really know them so that they are a good fit for your business. And then finally, the onboarding process, the onboarding step, because to be honest, you don't want to skip this one. It is absolutely imperative that you and your new hire get off on the right foot and they are able to really step into their role with ease and with confidence. And if you follow these steps, then you will be on the path to hiring success. Now, this is something that I talk about a lot with the studio owners inside of my Thrive group coaching program. You know, like I said, people management is something that just comes up. It's something that just comes up from time to time. And so if you could use some help in this area um, and alongside how to grow your business, what numbers to look at, sales processes, marketing, and so on, join me and the other studio owners just like you who want to build a thriving and profitable studio business. If you're looking to get access to Thrive, just let me know and I can share with you some more information about it. Applications are open and enrollment is open right now. Now, if you're loving what you're hearing, I would be so appreciative if you could take a quick minute and go to wherever you're listening to this and rate and review this podcast. It would mean a ton to me and will help to get the podcast out into our community so that more teachers and business owners just like you can feel encouraged and supported on their journey in our industry. Did you love this episode and want more? Head to spring3.com and check out my free resources that will help you run a profitable and fulfilling studio business. And before you go, one last reminder, there is no one way to do what you do, only your way. So whatever it is that you want to do, create or offer, you've got this. Thanks again for joining me today and have a wonderful rest of your day. Mm -hmm.